information about the uh, about our thought process, about the process by which we determined um, uh, the, the the transition that I that you're all here to talk about. Um, I just want to just give a quick overview. So obviously, um, you know that the recreation department uh, had been located uh, now. Now it's called the Parks and Recreation Department. Had been located up in a building called Building H up at Smith Vogue. How many people in this room have been to Building H at Smith Vogue? Okay, yeah, it's the old ROTC uh, rifle range that you used to be up there. It was then defunct for many years, and then back in 1991. Uh, the city worked out an agreement uh, between, actually between the Rec Commission and the Smith Boat Board of Trustees. Um, interestingly, the city spent uh, CDBG monies uh, and spent uh, some of its own sweat equity to fix up that space, turn it into the Recreation Commission space. Um, and and it's, just to understand, it's basically the administrative offices for the Recreation Department. It's not a place that um, that uh, programming happens in that building. Um, it's basically the administrative offices. So it, to compare it to the, to the senior center, you've got all the programming space all throughout the building, and then internal to the senior center, you've got the administrative offices. So, um, so the seven staff people who coordinate, do all the financial work, do all of the um, programming work, operate out of that building. So the... Um, the Smith Vocational Board of Trustees, uh, well, backing up a little bit more, there's a licensed practical nurse program that GCC operates that's been up at the VA Medical Center, actually, uh, for several years. In January, the VA Medical Center, because they are uh, bursting at the seams, told GCC that they had to be out by January 1st of that, uh, of that location. So Greenfield Community College began searching around the area uh, looking for available space. Uh, they reached out to uh, the Smith Vogue administration um, and were very interested in using that particular building, Building H, uh, to retrofit it as a place to hold their um, LPN classes. So, uh, under the terms of the agreement that the city and the Smith Vocational Board of Trustees have, um, there's basically a six month notice process whereby either party could end the agreement. Um, unfortunately, uh, the, in, in December, uh, the Smith Boat trustees voted to basically give the city six months notice that we have to be out of that building. Um, I, as a trustee, I also serve on the board of trustees, uh, sought more time. Uh, I asked if we could get a six month extension um, so that we have more time to be able to do, uh, to do more looking. Um, that was rejected. Uh, they, they, in fairness, they needed to have time to renovate the space because GCC wants to begin its classes in the fall there, um, August, September. So that began a process uh, for me and my administration of trying to locate a place that we could move this very busy, uh, very vibrant department that runs you know, hundreds of programs all around the city. Um, and of course, um, at, at during one of the busiest times for their department, because this is the time of year when they're doing, uh, preparing for Little League and preparing for all the other um, activities that happen in the spring. So we did a survey of all of our city space. We looked in all of our city schools to see if we had any vacant space that we could use. We looked in all of our city buildings, um, uh, you know, the municipal buildings, Memorial Hall. Uh, we looked uh, any place that we owned uh, uh, a building, we did a survey to figure out, is there a place we could move this department to? We also looked out into the wider community. We contacted the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. There are some state office buildings in the city. Um, actually, the Haskell building up at, up at Village Hill. Some people may not know that that's actually a, still a state office building, and there are state agencies that are located in there. Um, unfortunately, they did not have any space in that building. Uh, we checked with Smith College. Uh, Smith College obviously has a lot of property and has a lot of um, a lot of building space in the city, we checked with them. Um, we also investigated uh, the possibility of, um, could we, could we uh, put up like a modular 
office building. Um, sometimes you know when, when school construction happens, uh, they sometimes will get a modular office building. So we looked into that possibility. Um, both very expensive uh, in, terms of the, uh, in terms of the cost outlay, um, looking at a very moderate, uh, moderately priced uh, one of these modular buildings um, to both either lease or purchase the building, as well as all the site preparation that would have to be done. Because it's basically, you have to put in a foundation, you have to run utilities, you have to, it's, it's essentially like building a building. Um, we were looking on the order of about $200,000 to $225,000 to be able to do that. And we were doing it in the middle of winter, and we would have to try to figure out a way uh, to do all the site prep work and have it ready for June 2nd when we have to move in. Um, and so in terms of the best expenditure of financial resources and time, uh, that was not a viable option. We, of course, well, we, we looked a little bit in terms of commercial space in the community. Um, but as many of you know, one of, our, one of our strengths of our local economy is we have a very strong uh, real estate market, which means we have very expensive commercial rates. Um, on the order of, uh, depending on what part of the city, uh, between uh, 20 to $40 a square foot. Um, so very expensive. We don't, we don't currently lease any uh, private space uh, now uh, for city uh, offices, and it really would be a, um, a very expensive proposition. And that doesn't include uh, utilities, taxes. Most of our commercial properties have what are called triple net rent. So you, you pay for the underlying rent, and then you pay uh, property, you know, you pay property taxes, you pay water, you pay sewer, you pay utilities on top of that. So um, it's a very, uh, very expensive proposition. So one of the spaces that we found in the city that had the capacity um, to be able to take on seven staff people was the social day room, uh, as it's called, the, day, the social day, as it's called, um, here in the senior center. Um, this, is the, uh, this is the blueprint of the senior center, and I don't expect you to be able to see it and find a tail, but we're here in this room. This is, um, uh, well, it's often referred to as the great room. It's actually, as it was designed, it was designed as multi-purpose room one and multi-purpose room two. Uh, I think outside it's now called great room one, great room two. Um, at this end of the building is what's called the social daycare uh, portion of the building. So when the, when the senior center project was designed, um, there was a lot of thought that went into creating all kinds of uh, space uh, for the main functions of the senior center. All of the, you know, again, this room that we're in, the, the kitchen, um, all the various you know, computer rooms, the fitness center, the coffee shop, they're actually all labeled and they've pretty much been used um, that way, the, you know, the library, the classroom. There's also the activity room, uh, which is down at the end of the hall where some of the dance classes take place. That too also has a, um, a partition wall that goes across uh, to divide it into two spaces. Um, you probably have never noticed it before, well probably on election day you've noticed it, but there's a giant partition wall right there that's mechanical that closes to create these two separate spaces. So the social daycare room, um, the, the thought at the time was that this would be, um, for those of you who don't know what social day is, it's actually now more commonly referred to as supportive daycare. That's, that's sort of the new terminology as it's, as it's changed over time. But essentially what that is, is it's typically a service provider that for, for um, elders who have Alzheimer's or other forms of dementia that does not allow, that, that requires them to have care, uh, continuous care. And so the program that was envisioned at the time was that um, this could be utilized for that type of a facility and that, um, and that uh, folks, could uh, folks who were a caregiver or folks that were working um, could bring uh, an elderly uh, relative or parent here um, to be taken care of in this facility um, and, and it would be uh, operated, uh, I suppose it could be operated internally, but most likely by an outside agency that would operate it. So when the building was designed, um, uh, it was actually sort of created to be a separate facility um, within the facility. Um, 
a separate door, a separate vestibule, a separate entrance, and even a second set of dividing doors that lock that basically separate it from the rest of the senior center. Um, it has its own separate plumbing, its own separate uh, restrooms. There was even a shower put in there. Um, and obviously, given the population that was intended to be taken care of there, you know, security would be, uh, would be an important concern. And obviously, uh, you know, separate entrances, uh, separate exits, separate egress, because again, this was not a part of the center that was going to be part of the sort of general population of the center. So fast forward over the last uh, six or seven years, obviously the, the changes that have happened in healthcare, the changes that have happened in the way healthcare is reimbursed, many of these social day centers or supportive day centers as they've uh, been come to be called um, have uh, have been dwindling and it's been very difficult to uh, to be able to support them and part of that's based on the way insurance and medicare uh, reimburses uh, for these kinds of services so that never materialized here in the senior center and so uh, so as a result the space uh, yeah, I, the, the space has been used for meetings. People have been you know, using it for various meetings. I know groups have been, have been using that space as part of the senior center. Um, but again, just to lay the, the groundwork, uh, it was never intended to be part of the overall programming space of the senior center because many of these other spaces were set up to actually be very flexible rooms. This room, when you close the door between the two rooms, actually creates two different, and they're called multi-purpose rooms here on the plan that can be used for day-to-day -day programming. The same thing happens in the activity room. Um, uh, the two activity rooms, that can also happen. Um, so when, I, when we made this decision to try to uh, move the Parks and Rec service in here, it was with the understanding that we feel that we have adequate space throughout the rest of the building so that meetings that have been happening in here can be reprogrammed throughout the rest of the senior center as it was originally designed. In terms of what the long-term plan for this is, obviously um, we're not making any modifications to, uh, to the space. We're, there's a, a small counter that's being built, but it's freestanding and there'll be desks and there'll be partitions. And there was actually a great letter, I don't know if any of you saw it this morning, from Paul Garvey in the paper this morning, who spoke about how you know, the, the Parks and Rec or the Rec Department has kind of been the, the orphan that's been kind of kicked around the city. They were, they were in, originally in one building, then they were over in the Water Department on the second floor of the Water Department, which is not handicapped accessible. So they then, were moved over to this space at Smith Vogue, and now they've been sort of ejected from Smith Vogue, and so they're now, we're now trying to figure out what can be their permanent home. So I believe that in the short term, this is a, this is a good use of city space. It's a, it's a, obviously the facility was paid for by community development block grants, which means that um, there are federal restrictions on what this building can be used for. And uh, to those who say that this is a plan to turn it into a community center, let me reassure you that that cannot happen. That is illegal. Uh, the, 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 um, because we used federal community development block grants, which are to be used for low and moderate income populations, and because seniors are by default um, eligible for CDBG funds, this facility must primarily remain a senior center. And uh, the only way that we would be able to um, change that was if Northampton decided to not participate in the Community Development Block Grant Program ever again. And even then we'd have to wait five years uh, in order to do that. And we probably would have to pay back uh, some of the funding. The Community Development Block Grant funds um, were used to pay the debt service on this particular project over the last several years. We're actually making the last community development block grant debt payment on the building this year um, using CDBG funds. And then going forward out until 2029, the city uh, will be paying those debt service payments. There's still about $2.9 million left to pay off the debt on the building. And that'll be just coming out of general tax revenues. So 
So that's kind of the picture. In terms of the parks and rec, again, I want to stress, um, the, the, this is the administrative offices for the Parks and Rec Department. All of the programming that happens uh, for Parks and Rec happens out in all of the other facilities in the city, whether it's you know, Musanti Beach, whether it's Arcanum Field, whether it's Vets Field. Uh, they do a lot of programs at Look Park. They run a lot of their programs there. Uh, many of you may have uh, children or grandchildren who went through Safety Village program. Um, they, do, they run the Aquatic Center at the JFK Middle School, and they do water aerobics and open swimming programs. So all of the programming they do is out around the rest of the city. This isn't gonna be a place where people are coming to do uh, recreation programs or, or uh, park programs. Uh, this is going to be a place where there, there will be uh, staff people working on the development of programs. There is a customer counter so that if people come that may want to get a brochure, they may want to register for a program, um, they can come here to do that. But again, they're coming in a separate entrance, they're coming into this office, not coming through the senior center, um, and primarily it's the working hours of the department, it's a city department, so it's open from 8.30 to 4.30. Uh, so if there are events happening here at night or on the weekends, there will not be any staff here, there won't be people coming to the center during this time. The um, parking, I know, has been a major issue. Um, seven staff people. We've already been in discussion with the Northampton Housing Authority, uh, to, and we've already uh, gotten an agreement to be able to have seven uh, parking spaces for those staff people to be able to park, not in the senior center parking, not in, in that parking, but as part of the Housing Authority parking. So there's not gonna be seven staff people parked here, and, and again, we're not having uh, I, I know that people had visions of, you know, kids in soccer cleats running around the senior center or running into the senior center, but that's really not what's happening here. Um, they're, they're, these are primarily parents that are coming to register. And, and what we're trying to do, and we're finding a lot of people are preferring this, is most of the registration is moving to online registration. Uh, people want to just register for stuff online, pay for it with a credit card, um, and that's, for, for busy families, that's more and more the direction that we're heading. So I think we're even gonna find that um, there'll be less and less customers coming in. I also wanna point out that the Senior Center is a place where people other than seniors come to all the time. Uh, people come here for community events, they come here to vote, they come here to donate, they come here to buy books, um, they come here to buy PDTA passes, and those aren't just for seniors, those are for any member of the community. So there's already other members of the community that are coming in to use the center uh, on, a, on a daily basis. Obviously all the, all the great programming that happens here. So that's basically um, my quick overview of of where we are, how we got to this point. And let me assure you that um, if there was some other space that I had available that I could move them into during this time period between now and June 2nd, we wouldn't be having this meeting. We would not be having this meeting because I would have already um, executed that move. Um, and, and there just isn't. All of the other options are more long-term options. And you know, folks who were involved in the planning of this center know that if you're trying to plan some kind of a new building or some kind of a new facility, it takes time. Um, so in the short term, I really think this is the most cost-effective use of, of city tax dollars and resources, and I believe, I, I strongly believe, that working with the senior center staff, that the building, as it, was, as it was originally designed to be programmed, we can continue to accommodate all the programs, all the groups of people that have been using this center um, and, and as we move into the future, obviously, we'll be looking for other options related to the Parks and Rec, um, because we obviously know the changing demographics of our senior population. So, I'm gonna stop there, and I'm gonna turn it over to people who wanna ask questions, just so that we can, um, I can try to answer your questions, I can try to allay your concerns, and, um, and make this meeting more about you asking me questions and giving me feedback. So, I know we have a microphone, uh, oh, so I think, I don't know, do you want to, do we want to have people come up to the microphone? Whatever you want to do. Okay, and then, is that one usable? Yes, don't make it. Yes, don't make it. Okay. So should I make this the one for people to come to? 
Half the people want to come to that. But otherwise, you're going to have to play Oprah and walk around with a microphone. <laughs> My name's Louis Spiro. I started Timeless Tunes here about eight years ago. About eight years ago. And um, we have already, you said there's plenty of space, but we already have to not get one rehearsal in already because of a conflict and uh, when uh, we, we, we go out and play for uh, elders throughout the valley and uh, we had a gig at this one place but they're going to have some kids come in and of course schools have a tough, tougher time with scheduling than we do usually and we were already found out that this was already booked this is where we usually do our rehearsals and we're not going to be able to get a rehearsal usually if we can't get a rehearsal, we're in the social day. And we've been in the social day many, many times. So it's already affected us. And I, and I appreciate that. And, and I uh, you know, I've made the commitment to the staff um, who I met with uh, before this transition was announced and when I met with the Council on Aging. It's my commitment to work with them uh, to figure out how we can program this building so that everyone has the opportunity. And if it means for, in your case, if you need a music rehearsal space, we can work with you to try to find um, alternative music uh, rehearsal space. Because we do have other um, assets in the community that we can probably, uh, probably work on. But that's the type of issue that the staff will be working on. Um, you know, it's a, the, pro, the, the center, to its credit, the designers really tried to create a space that was flexible, that would grow over time and grow as the community changed and, and as the demographic changed and as the things that people are interested in change. And so there's a lot of flexible space built in. You know, these doors, again, were originally designed to be closed so that there's two separate meeting spaces. And each one of these spaces is 12 feet. We have, we have yep. 15 people. Exactly. And we're, we're playing with all our equipment back here. Mm -hmm. and, and this is where you rehearse right here. Where we rehearse. Exactly. And if you want to play, say, bingo back here mm -hmm. at the same time, that would be impossible. Well, there would be singing, there would be music going on, that's right. So we'd have to work on finding compatible uses that could work together. Right now, but you there? Yeah. yeah. But you yeah. took that away by doing. Yeah. I, I understand that that's going to be a change and we'll have to work on compatibility. What I'm understanding in terms of these doors in the center, which were designed, I give it to Mayor. My understand, I just want to say this, my understanding is these doors are closed uh, about 10 times a year here in the center. Um, well, twice we know for elections because Ward 3 and Ward 4 vote here. Um, so it seems like there's more capacity for using these multi-purpose spaces and the other multi-purpose spaces in the building and we're going to try to work to make sure we accommodate all the programs. I have someone with a microphone in the back who I think was next. And yes, like it is I. He'll hand the microphone to you. It is I. Mr. Mr. When the city's uh, ability to use spaces for vocational school was abruptly sprung on you, you didn't like it. And you complained at the time about lack of transparency. I think that given the things that you've said today, if you had said them before, and given the seniors a chance to buy into the decision, we would all have gone along with it. And in fact, I don't think there are many people who disagree with the inevitability of this conclusion, at least for the short term. However, the lack of transparency is a real concern to us because that seems to be an important attribute of our city government. And that's a, uh, and that's a, and, and, and that is a very fair point, Mr. Jones, and I will take and accept that criticism. Obviously, um, when, the, when the decision became announced, um, for example, I was concerned, part of the process we had to go through was we, also, we had to contact HUD, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, um, to even see if this was a possibility. 
And I'll tell you, I, I did not want to announce in uh, uh, you know, January or February that we're looking at the senior center um, and then have everyone get all upset and get all worried and then, then have CDBG tell me, actually, you can't do that. Um, you're not allowed to do that. And we did have someone, um, we did have another building in the city, the James House facility, uh, which we also inquired about using that. Um, and that one we were told we were not allowed to. So what the way that the Community Development Block Grant and HUD looked at this was, this particular um, space is about 6% of the overall square footage of the senior center. That's what it equates to, is 6%. Um, and in fact, the, the main, all of the rest of the senior center as it was designed will remain unchanged and, and will not be impacted because we're, this is gonna be completely separate. Um, and so Community Development Block Grant gave us the authorization to be able to do this, knowing that we were still going to maintain this. Um, you know, the remaining 94% uh, of the building would still be used for its primary use, which is as a senior center. So. Um, and then we were also looking at lots of other, um, lots of other options, including uh, looking at the modular units. We were looking at, um, at school buildings. I had an architect walk through Memorial Hall with me. Um, some of you who've ever been in Memorial Hall know that there's um, kind of a mezzanine level that, uh, that was created office spaces by the state. Um, the problem there is the elevator doesn't serve that floor. Um, so it's not handicapped accessible. So we were told by an architect it would probably cost about four or five hundred thousand dollars just to retrofit that to make it accessible. Um, and obviously that's not something we could do by June second if we were going to do that. So, so when when we finished that entire process, I think that was in March uh, when we got to the end of the process, and literally this is where we landed on this space being the best viable space, um, I met with the director of senior services to talk to her about it, and then I met with the council on aging board immediately after that to let them know about what we were planning to do, and then I announced it to the public. So, um, and that was announced in March, I think it was March, uh, March 12th, and obviously the deadline is June 2nd for when we have to have them out of there according to the agreement. Um, and so, so the time frame for when it was announced was March, and then obviously I've been, I've been getting lots of feedback and hearing from lots of community members about it and lots of good letters to the editor. So, um, so now I'm gonna, I have another person who has the microphone. Sorry. Anyway, I'm a retired geriatric psychologist, and I've also been a senior center director. Oh, okay. Um, as I said, I was a retired geriatric psychologist. I've also been a senior center director, and I'm an active member of the senior center now. Already, programs are outgrowing their roles. The fitness center no longer fits in the fitness center. We have so many people, even I had an accident on there. There are almost 6,000 people that were served in the social day room last year. 57 programs were scheduled. Now that does not include training programs for volunteers, which there have been close to 15,000 hours. It does not include uh, staff meetings, rentals, or just impromptu meetings. There are more programs that were scheduled for that, 19 more programs. This is a big deal because there aren't enough room for everybody now. Even the astronomy class was in the, in the middle of the room out here. There was no place for seniors to come and sit as they wait for their programs. Also, another big concern is that these spaces can't be rented out anymore. And part of the budget of the senior center is made up from the rentals. And that could be close to eight to $10,000. And again, also I'm concerned about parking with people even just running in to get things, things like that. I think, and I also would like to ask you, what might temporary look like? And <laughs> what are you talking about towers? I think the rec department is wonderful. I think they deserve their own space and an ability to expand like we are. We've got a changing demographics, as you said. 
And I would also ask respectively, respectful, well, whatever it is, that you honor citizens, senior citizens enough to include us in any decisions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, just to answer the, the question that you have, um, uh, obviously when we get everyone in there and settled and get them, uh, and then we have to do the cleanup at their old, uh, old office space, um, obviously there'll be a bit of a transition period as they, as they uh, get going. It'll also be a transition for the senior services staff here um, to work through. Uh, but obviously, um, you know, we, we want to begin to think about more long term what the um, what this department looks like and where where it might end up. Again, I have to caution you though, um, because um, that will you know, the idea of building a new facility um, is a is a costly proposition, um, and so that's something that we would have to look at. We have other capital needs in the project in the city. We have other building needs in the in the city, um, but it's definitely something that we would begin thinking about more long term. Um, this is a, you know, this is a short-term fix to a deadline, a six-month deadline that was imposed on us. Um, but I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's a long-term permanent solution uh, because obviously, as the center needs more space, uh, you know, that's something. And, and frankly, I hope that the parks and recreation um, services flourish here in the city um, and that they're able to um, to also offer programs, which I would say are for ages, uh, you know. All the, you know, it's for all ages. They do programming for all ages, including seniors. So, um, so that's the uh, so that's really the thought process at this point. My main issue was um, where am I going to get this very uh, busy staff settled so that we have continuity and they can continue to do their work. Um, and so that was the uh, the process. And then we'll begin. You know, I know the rec the Parks and Recreation Commission has already been talking about, you know, looking around at some of their land, some of their facilities, to see whether or not uh, there is um, space at some of their existing land, because we own, you know, places like Arcanum Field and, and other places where there might be um, space uh, to be able to, to come up with a, a facility. And that would, you know, that would make sense because that's where their programming occurs. Um, they're in the middle right now of finishing the Florence Fields project um, which is a new major uh, uh, recreation facility that will be coming online this year. You may have seen some of the construction and the playground work that's happening there now. Uh, so that's a big project they're working on, but obviously it's a longer, a longer term conversation. Uh, hi, my name is Elaine Kirsten. I just have a couple comments. First of all, I want to thank Smith Boat for um, uh, making their space use um, consistent with their vision and their purpose by having the nursing program there, and that's a big benefit to the nursing world, to the, the vocational uh, directions of many of our youth. So I'm very, very happy with that. Secondly, I just want to comment on something, and I've been getting a little more concerned about my, this issue as I've heard you, to be honest. Um, a key characteristic of a successful government is sort of the concept of agility. And um, so what I'm hearing is that um, you, in, in terms of this problem that you had, you reacted to it. You have no backup plan for what happens if, in terms of space use. Uh, and um, so I guess that the Northampton government sort of fails the, the uh, criteria for agility. I would be concerned, though, if what if there was a fire in, in one of your major buildings, or if there was a, a concern somewhere, um, what would you do? And so I would advise that you and your team put together some kind of backup plan for what do we do in the event of losing major space and be able to act with agility to respond and deal with that without bringing all this kind of angst uh, forward. I'm sorry. Um, and, and I just wanted to identify what concerns me also is that of late it seems that there have been a number of decisions that have been made without community input. Um, the SIP car issue at, at City Hall, uh, I've gone many, many times now, people are forced to go into the handicap just to park their cars, or there's long lines there because we took two spaces away that didn't appear to be used all the time, 
and the result is some backup system, very busy time. So that was sort of the issue. The bench is on Main Street. Um, the water and sewer rates that, that look, does look like we're making changes in that. Now the use of the senior center, and there's been absolutely no input on that uh, before the fact. Yeah. I feel a little unhappy that apparently staff and the director of the senior center seem to identify this as a viable space. And no, that's, not, that's actually Okay, well then I'm glad I'm wrong about yeah. that. I'm glad I'm wrong. That's Thank you, correct. I stand corrected. Um, and, and so I, I would just uh, make those comments um, uh, that, uh, that uh, to, to sort of shove people aside um, and to think that we could, you know, alter the existing space for those um, statistics that I think were beautifully shared um, is, is just sort of a slap in the face to us seniors. And so that's all I can say. Well, obviously, uh, one of the things I've strived to do since I've been mayor is to be very open and transparent about the decisions that I've tried to make. Um, the zip car, the zip car uh, use of those parking spaces actually went to the city council. It had to be voted on by the city council. It went through their whole process. Um, but I'm just telling you that in terms of that being my a fait accompli or something like that, we've had a lot of community discussion about that. We heard a lot of feedback because originally they were going to be in the parking garage. Um, and people were very upset about that. But I don't want to turn this into zip car. Um, and I will certainly, I mean, I will, uh, I am, will take, um, I will take uh, my lumps for uh, decisions that I've made that haven't been correct or haven't been well received. Um, I feel like I've always been open about that. I've been open to changing my mind if I, um, if I make a decision that, and that I'm able to think about it. Um, but again, that's the nature of, um, of the job that I have, of having to make a lot of decisions. And you know, in terms of agility, I mean, this is not, um, it's fairly unprecedented that we've had to move a city department uh, in less than six months. Um, there could be a fire. There, could be there certainly fire. could be a fire, and we, would, and, and we would be ready, and we, would, and we would probably be going through the same exact process we went through in this particular case. And we'd be trying to think about what's the most cost-effective way for taxpayers which I also know is a concern. Okay. Uh, my name is Jane Boyette. I was on the building committee since day one. I was on the building committee since day one. The only available land in the city of Northampton at that time for us was this piece. It is less than two acres that was kind of required. When the architect looked at it, the rule of thumb five square feet for every senior in Northampton. At the time, there were 5,000 seniors. Five times five is 25,000 square feet. This building is 18,000 square feet. So it was undersized at the beginning. You have now 5,500, 6,000, as Lady said. That would be 30,000 square feet for this building alone. The parking lot was shortchanged in the first place. Yeah, they yeah. made the parking spaces straight in instead oh, of having an angle. So we could get more in. This is wrong. We need double the space. Don't tell us we can accommodate more people than what we've got. So we're using wrong figures. Thank you. Hi, my name is Diane Palladino, and I use the senior center, I use the, the gym, I use uh, the classes, um, and it's a very vibrant and wonderful resource in the city. Um, I'd like to question your definition of surplus space. Yeah. Um, here we have a room, and let's, let's, that was designated, louder? Okay. Here we have a room that was designated for seniors in a particular way. That didn't come to fruition. It's now being used for seniors in a different way, but still for seniors. But given the, the numbers you just gave us, you just shared with us about programming, uh, given the information we just got about the undersizing of the building to begin with. So <clears throat> when you couldn't find space elsewhere, it seems to me, from your own very own testimony today, that what you did was say, well, this is room is not used enough, so let's push the programming out of that room, squish it in the building that's undersized, and then declare it surplus space. So I have a real problem with that declaration of surplus space. Um, <clears throat> I go, as I said, I go to the gym. It's jammed almost all the time. We don't have a place to do stretching. 
which is, should be vital if you're going to go to the gym. And frankly, not to be disrespectful, but we don't have a place to change. And if you've ever tried to change into gym clothes sitting on the toilet, it's not a lot of fun. <laughs> but I don't want to end on that kind of ha-ha note. I think the declaration of this as surplus space was in error. Was in error. It is not surplus space. It's space that you took programs out of, shoved it in the rest of the building, and said, oh, now we have surplus space. So I have serious concerns about that. Thank you. Thank you. that are um, of significance to me. Wow. Yep. One of them was the uh, change of the space that was done in less than a transparent process. The other is the change of the name of who we are to senior services instead of the Council on Aging. And the reason why these things are significant to me is that in planning, we look at what the needs of the target population are first. The needs that I hear most often and that we bring up in the Wisdom Project are one, that elders need a place to congregate. They need to get out of their houses and feel like they're part of a community. The second one is the need for meaning relevance and respect from the whole community. These are the two needs that I see we're in danger of not meeting. I think that it's important to have services available, but the primary thing that I hear from elders and have heard for years is the loss of relevance, the loss of of, of caring within the community. And this is how we seem to be interpreting this move. Yeah. And, um, I, I, I appreciate that, and, and uh, you know, that, that is not my intent. That is not my intent to, uh, to in any way minimize the importance of this facility, the importance of, uh, of the services that we provide to seniors in the community. Um, you know, I donated to this building when it was being built. I sponsored, uh, you know, furniture in the building. My my family and I. I understand the importance of it. I wasn't in city government at the time when when it was built, so I didn't vote for it. But it was before my time. Um, but in terms of the change of the name, we still have a council on aging. Um, the council on aging is the advisory board uh, that's formed under Mass General Law. Um, and, in turn, and so what we were trying to do with the change was to clarify that there's this advisory board called the Council on Aging, uh, which is made up of uh, seniors throughout the community, and then there's the staff that run um, all of the programming and all of the services. So the departmental name um, was changed to Senior Services, um, but the, the Council on Aging remains. It, for me, it was confusing to people that you had an advisory board called the Council on Aging, then you had a department by the same name. So it was really about clarifying that. And many communities, in fact, I mean, as we know, the terms that are used um, to describe uh, uh, seniors have changed over time. Um, it's, been a, it's been an evolving, just like the, thing, just like the senior day um, terminology has now changed to supportive day um, because of the, the, I'm not sure how that happened, but that's, so the, the terminology has changed. And we were really just trying to modernize that. And it was not, and obviously senior is in the name of the department, senior services. And so we're not in any way trying to minimize that. I and most of the people in the room are not members of the council. Exactly. We have no belonging to the council then as you described. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But you, but you belong to a community of seniors who come here uh, to the senior center, and we have a staff called Senior Services whose job it is is to provide services, not just here at the center, but throughout the community to, uh, to people over age 55. Uh, I have a, a suggestion. There's an enormous building at the 
police department just yeah. opened up. Yeah. 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 And on the way, it's, it's bigger than City Hall. It's enormous, and it's, you can find a little space like that in a police department very easily. And they wouldn't miss anything. Please yeah. consider the police department. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, you know, one of the issues with this police department is uh, we have, um, you know, the, the first floor where people come into the lobby area um, for services or to get records. Um, that's a space that's, that's open to the public and open to customers, but the rest of the building is a secure facility for obvious reasons. And so there's layer after layer of security. It's not a place that, uh, that we could have a parks and rec department um, being run out of that's really not how um, that be how it was designed. So that, be that would be a challenge. My name is Alan Coteen, and I was glad to hear you say a few minutes ago that when you played mistakes, you can open to correct them. Because I think you've made a mistake now. And I have two questions. One is, are you open to changing this decision? And the second question is, what would you have done if the space wasn't here? Uh, probably what I would have um, what I would have had to do would be to go to the city council and see if I could appropriate funds uh, on an emergency basis uh, to be able to lease private space somewhere, which would have been quite expensive um, to, to, to try to do. And then we would have had all the other issues around outfitting the space. Uh, uh, we would have had to have dealt with things like you know, custodial maintenance, uh, parking, all the other issues. So that would probably be what I'd be doing, and that would be significant in terms of cost, uh, in terms of a cost outlay. Um, we would also have to go through a procurement process, most likely, to do that, um, because uh, any time a state uh, or a local uh, government has to go through that, they have to do a formal procurement and bidding process and pay prevailing wage, et cetera. So that's probably where I would have um, would have been would have been forced to do if I could not find any other uh, city-owned space that we could make this move to. What about the other question? What about the other oh, I'm sorry. Well, I, I I'm sorry. What was the? I, you know, at this point, it's it, we have um, you know we have a staff of seven employees you know who are you know good folks. They live here in the community. They they work hard. They're providing these services. Um, they are in the process, they have to be out of that building um, by June 2nd. And so that's where we're, we really are, and we're already doing some of the work to prepare the space for them. Um, so I, at this point, I really feel like this is the best short-term decision in terms of what, and again, I'm trying to balance, you know, part of my job uh, is to have to balance all the various competing interests in the city, and I have to try to balance all the needs of all of our different city departments. And so that's why I think this is the decision that we have to move forward with. And then obviously we can begin looking at more long-term solutions so that we're able to um, able to, to free up the space in the future. Um, so that's, that's, that's my answer to that question. On, uh, on, on days away from 45 days away. We heard a lot of I in this conversation. I did this. I did that. I decided this. Do you know that March was not an appropriate time to the question to tell the people in this city that you had anything that needed to be done and that you knew about it since December? That is not an appropriate, I want to know if you think that's correct. I'm not talking about questions, okay? The second one is, that program that was going to be in the back room was for seniors. Seniors are the main people who have dementia. So to try to categorize it as something that you can change because it wasn't really for seniors is wrong. And I'd like to wait. I'd like to know if you agree with me on that. The third thing is, your search was all done by someone, I guess, people on your staff. It was not a community decision. It did not, as I understand it, involve the important people who work here. And I think you should today pledge yourself, and I hope you agree, to have a committee, a very short-term committee, to work on where these folks could go, since you've already decided the 
that will go here very shortly, where they could go so that in six months we could have our space back. Yeah. Do you agree? So in terms of the March, uh, the March is when I announced what we had decided in terms of the space, but when the decision, when Smith Boat voted on this back in, I think it was December 2nd, um, it was obviously clear at that point that we were going to have, we, you know, I, I went, before, uh, went before the council, it was in the paper that we were going to now have to start looking at all available resources where we could move them. So I don't think this was just announced uh, that we were needing space in March, it, it went back further than that. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of a search committee, we you know we've got a Parks and Recreation committee, um, and one of the things that they are going to be tasked with is is looking at how this works, as well as thinking further in terms of long range planning about where um, about where the Parks and Recreation Department might go. Okay. Well, I appreciate that as a as a suggestion. It's not something that at this point I'm I'm ready to commit to, um, because again, my my goal right now is to uh, get this transition done, have some time for us to be able to um, get them settled, and then be thinking about a longer term uh, planning longer, process. Longer. You didn't answer my question. Six months. Yeah, I think six months would be a challenge for us. Uh, six months. So thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, please. I have to leave. My name is Lorraine Zaleski, and I've been using this facility for quite a while. And this input has been wonderful. We all agree to it. But the sad part of it is, it's a done deal, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be. There's some folks who have hands up in the front. Oh, yeah. we, oh, there, oh sorry, Jim. Sorry about that. I didn't see you. Yeah, you can call me Jim. So I guess I'll have to introduce myself. I'm Jim Spencer. Uh, I spend about 80% of my month at the senior center. I think I don't come here maybe three days. Every th three Fridays a month I don't come here. I give that time to my wife. However, <laughs> I, have seen, <laughs> I have seen this senior center growing from the time when I was teaching up at the old place that was really the dump and it was such a great wonderful thing to come down here. I teach four classes and next year I plan to teach eight classes. Out of those eight classes, I probably won't be able to do four of them because there'll be no space. What I'm looking for you is, and, and, the senior, and seniors are growing, you know that. Your city is going to be 50% seniors by 2025. This place is going to be too small by 2025. Nobody's addressed the growing population what we're going to do with them. That's coming. That's your responsibility to look forward and get something done. What I'd like to see, six months is too short. I understand that, and I agree with you. That's a job in six months. Give us a year. Just say yes for a year, we'll be happy. No, 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 Hi, my name is Judy. I'm very concerned about what's happening here. Um, I have to say... Where do, you, where do you live, Judy? I live in... Okay. So, next door is a building that was meant for the elderly. Everybody in this room, that these are the people that built this city up to what it is. It was actually a town when they were all you know, put, paying their taxes and, and building this town up. And they served this country for people like you to be able to stand up there at that podium and go on and on about that that map there of this building and stuff like that. I heard you a couple of times actually insinuate, you'd say it was the senior center and then you'd say it doesn't really belong to the senior center. I heard you say it. But here's my example, next door, that has become nothing but, it was meant for seniors, that building, and it's become nothing but a, a, a crime-ridden, disaster. I've been in it. I know people who live there. And it, and it breaks my heart that seniors have to go live in that building. So, I don't understand why you, and I agree with the woman. I love this woman that said she kept hearing, I, 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 you, me. This country is about, we, uh, we the people, for the people, by the people. And we are the people, not you. You are the mayor of Northampton, but you represent every single person in this room. And, and, I, and I really wish that you would. I'm going to say this. 
A tax, once a tax, always a tax. Once a room, always a room. And the next thing you know, you seniors aren't going to have any rooms because they're going to take them all. And he's going to bloviate as to why you're taking them and it's, you're going to lose your space. You're going to lose it all. You're going to end up in that building over there. I'd like to see you, Mayor, go live in that building for one week and see the, the horror that that building has become. Thank you. Your Honor, um, yes, ma'am. It's my name is Doris Davio, and with that previous young lady just said I live in that dump next door. But what my irritation is I'm, has nothing to do with what you want to do with this building, but it's the parking. I don't know how they figured the parking spaces out when they built this facility. Um, I know you have a, a lot next door and some space for the Cahill apartments, but I just came home and I have nowhere to put my car, but I live there, I pay rent there, what am I going to do? Why wasn't a parking lot size or a limitation of people to the size of this building? I don't know, but how am I going to go home now? I got nowhere to put my car. Thank you uh, for that comment, ma'am. Uh, uh, again, the, the Salvo House is a state um, housing authority facility, and obviously the, there is a lease of this particular land that the senior center was built on, um, and I understand that parking is a challenge. It's a challenge throughout the city. So uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate your perspective. Hi, my name is Karen Hollywood, and uh, listening to you talk, what I'm concerned about is, you said that that room generates funding for the senior center. Is the town going to pay the senior center to use that space to replace the funding that that space not generates? Well, certainly the the, well, the senior center, the senior senior services is a city department, uh, and we provide funding to the city department. And to the extent that there's any revenue lost because of this move, certainly, I mean, this is a city agency, and, a, and so, I mean, we pay already uh, a, a, port, a large portion of the budget here. Um, there are revolving fund programs that raise revenues that go back into senior center uh, programs. It's actually the same exact model for the Parks and Rec Department. Um, we have we put city money into it, but then a lot of the programming money that they raise goes back into supporting it. So let me assure you on that front, there will not be any loss of funding uh, to the senior center um, because of revenues, but you know the loss of this 1,200 square feet that's that wouldn't be available for rental. Um, so that that should not be a concern. Um, and you know to Jim's point, I I, I appreciate what you're saying, Jim, and I appreciate um, you know the perspective that you have. And um, I think, I guess what I, what I would do is, um, I guess what I would like to do is, is, is come back to this, uh, to this community. I think, I think six months is a bit of a challenge, but come back to the community um, in a year to, to, to understand, how, you know, A, how it's working, and talk about what we've been thinking about more longer term in terms of solutions. So I'm even, I'm even open to doing another meeting in six, I'm even open, you know, we could do a meeting, we can do a meeting in six months to get more feedback about how it's working. I guess what I'd like you to do is um, please just allow us to, to do this now in the short term. Um, give it a chance so we can see how, how it works and then, and then I'll, I'll be down here to meet with you to get feedback on a continuous basis. And I'm going to be, I meet with the staff here anyway on a regular basis. Um, and I can meet with the Council on Aging who has that advisory role. You're on the Council on Aging, Jim. Um, and I'll definitely commit myself to have, making this be a conversation. And, and it's not, and you know, the idea that it's a, you know, it's, it's this is permanent and it's never going to change. Again, I have to stress. I did not wake up one morning saying, wow, where do I move the Parks and Rec Department today? That was really not um, something that I saw coming, something that I wanted to do. We had a great location. Um, it's worked for almost 20 years. Other forces uh, you know, have kind of come into play, and I understand the decision to do it. 
Um, but it wasn't something that we were giving a, a lot of time to be able to plan for. So I do view this as a short-term fix, um, but we'll find a longer-term uh, solution. Jim, did you want to respond? Let me make that commitment reciprocally. You need me, I'm always available. I appreciate that, Jim, thank you. Now, there's been a yes. person, hold it. oh, I'm sorry. Hello, Anthony Patolo. I had the pleasure of serving on the building committee here as well. And one of the things I remember in the meetings that we had was we, did, we knew we didn't have enough space at the beginning. We we're almost 8% below what we wanted to have. We didn't have the parking we wanted to have, and now we're taking 6% away with this. Temporary somehow always seems to grow, and it's very, very worrisome that we're now almost at 10%. We're gonna be 10% below where we should, should be at, and we don't have a clear idea how long that's gonna go on. The idea of talking about this in six months is great, I'm more afraid that we're going to continue this mode and that we're going to continue losing this and the seniors are still going to keep growing. That's got to be dealt with. Um, there's some folks in the front who had their hands up and so I think the mic's been in the back. So uh, I know in the front row and then back here. Right, uh, right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. She's had her hand up for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, good morning. And for the benefit of those others that um, may not know me, I will introduce myself. I'm Donna Slocum. I live in Florence in Ward 6. Prior to that, the rest of my life was spent in Leeds, so I've been around here in the city for a long time. And I've written down what I wanted to say so I would kind of stay on point and truthfully remember. Uh, some of this you've already pointed on, David, and I would like to say, Emory, please don't take this personally. It's not against your program, and thank you for being here. I would first like to say that the most valuable asset we have here at the Senior Center is our extraordinary staff. They go the extra mile for us every day. <coughs> Next would, be, would come our building here at Con Street, which for many seniors is a very important part of their everyday life. This is not just a facility for services. This is a place for friendship and family. And it's a busier time now for the seniors here at the center as well, because let's face it, some of us couldn't get out in, in the bad weather. I am not happy about this decision to accommodate the rent department here, but I'm, what I'm most angry about is that you chose now, weeks after this move was decided upon and initiated to meet with us. Why weren't we met with and informed prior to the events taking place? Why didn't we have a voice in what we would, would happen to our beautiful home away from home? I have several other questions. I'm going to read them all and you can address them. <laughs> Why was it our space you chose to take away? I have been told that this is a temporary room and can't help but wonder how unnecessary that expense was. Why not build a building at the rec department, their own permanent spot on Spring Street, in, in an office trailer, or a place in the new fields out on Spring Street? Some of this I know David's already touched on. Um, I noticed that there's a plane going up this week. I wonder what that building is. And I wonder if there's money for that. Why isn't there money for a house for the rec department, which probably would be more important. Um, if there's funds for that, there should be funds for the rec department. And I know you didn't want to build or rent, but why not use the Fiker School? That would have been another possibility for the program. I know we rent to a program there now, but I, I think the little rec that we get from them would be offset by the rec department being there because the rec department does get so many fees from their uh, programs. And having to move them twice is an additional expense to the taxpayers. And this is also unfair to the rec department which is being crowded into one big room and no permanent installations of their equipment or their, their uh, wiring, so it's also a, a, a trip and hazard fall uh, situation created there. And we not only lost meeting space, but we had to lose half of our library because that had to be repurposed for meeting space. And that's fine. We, we are willing to share our spaces with each other. But that means if somebody comes to use the library and there's a meeting in there, they can't use the library and we've had to get rid of furniture and everything. And I'm just wondering if 
or when we get our room back, how that's going to be replaced. Um, so what's going to happen now, I'm also about the parking. And it's overcrowded, and there's buses running through, and I'm just worried that people coming in with their children will say, just wait out here, I'm going to run in, and then we'll have to worry about we have children in the parking lot too. But I also want to know if there'll be an accounting transfer from budget line items to reimburse the senior center for the cost of the maintenance, water, heat, air conditioning lights, et cetera, that the rec department uses. Or is, it all, is the already straight senior center budget expected to bear this additional expense? These extra people in the building also add more work for our custodian, and will there be an adjustment made for him as well? This building was built for the sole purpose of being a senior center, and many of the donations were made with that intent, and some were memorials. And I wonder how some of those donors might feel that these gifts have been compromised or unappreciated. And what I've heard here, uh, David, I'm sorry, with all this respect, I've heard a veiled threat that we have to pay more taxes for the rec department to have their own space, and just a lot of excuses and rationalizations. We need something more tangible to know what's going to happen here. I certainly, it's not my intent to make threats, and I don't believe I've made any threats today. Um, in terms of the cost, again, this is a city facility, and the city pays for all of the utilities. The city, it comes out of the city budget. We, we just like we pay for all of the utilities um, in other. Uh, that's right. And, and, yes, ma'am, I understand that. It's city taxpayers. I guess when I say we, I mean we, the city budget, which is where all of your taxes go to pay for it, for the heat in this building, the heat in all of our city buildings. It's actually paying um, for the heat, uh, you know, in the rec uh, department space as well. So we'll be covering that cost. It's not. Um, it's not like it's going to be an added cost uh, to the senior center. The building is heated. The space is, um, you know, electricity, utilities. Um, so we'll continue to cover that cost. Um, we had so many questions. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, you know, the facility on uh, on Spring Street, the Florence Fields facility, um, that is uh, part of the ball field. Um, there's a pavilion that was designed as part of the ball field. It's um, it's. Yes, ma'am. I understand. Uh, I, I understand. That's that's the. Con I understand that. Well, the situation, ma'am, is that, that that project's been planned for many years and, and, uh, and has been built. And the, the other difficulty that we found with that particular uh, site is many of our grants uh, that are tied to that site uh, will make it difficult for us to, um, to build a building on that site at this point uh, because of the grant funding, because of the conservation restrictions that are on the property. Um, that's going to be a challenge for us. Um, but in terms of, again, trying to rebuild, to build a building there now, um, in, starting in the middle of winter in December, um, we're going to appropriate the money, we're going to go out to bid, hire a contractor, design a building, and build a building. There's just no way that that could happen, not to mention the fact that we don't have the, we don't, we have to do longer term financial planning to be able to um, build a project like that into our, into our capital program. So those are the kinds of things that we have to look at going forward, but it's not something we could do. Again, we, we even thought about the modular uh, piece, um, just very difficult and very expensive to do in, the, in, in a short period of time. What about CCA funds for that? Yeah. Um, that, is a, that is a potential, uh, that could be a potential yeah. use. A we'll, tax. That is a tax, actually. <laughs> it is a tax. Yeah. It's most definitely a tax. Yeah, and, and again, your taxes are paying for this building. I mean, that's, and let's be real, our taxes pay for everything. Uh, we have a limited amount of tax dollars, and so we're trying to use them. I feel like I'm trying to use them prudently. So. Excuse me, when you have the mic, people show due respect. So how about you showing respect to people who are talking now? Thank you. Yeah.
Okay, uh, Mr. I think Mr. Dawson. David. David, uh, you know, I, I've sat here and I've listened to the senior. We've all been involved with this building. I was involved originally when it was built. I was on the council. I think what you need to do is to not wait six months to create a committee, but create a committee now yeah. that will sit with you or with the Recreation Commission and discuss how we alleviate this situation. This is a temporary fix. This should go back to the seniors. But rather than wait six months, I think if you form a committee and get them active, there's many things that a committee can do. And one of the things that they'll do, the same as we do with the senior center, is fundraising. They will help the younger generation right now that has the kids on the ball field and everything, mm -hmm. they're uh, in a position to help and they will fundraise. So I think uh, rather than wait, you should get things started immediately. Yeah. Thank you. I think there's a question here, but I don't know where the mic is. Um, Good morning. My name is Mary Lou Jilson. I live in Champions. I've been here. I've been here since 1975. After I started coming to this senior center, one of the things that that we have been able to accomplish is to have people come in here, and we have provided recreation for them. We come, we provided uh, socialization for them. Our uh, group that I have also worked with of seniors is the uh, Scrabble group. It started out with three people and it is now 12. Uh, we, we're looking for a place that we can be that will not interfere with other things. At, at the present time we meet in the bistro. I don't know if that's going to continue. I think that what this gentleman, Mr. Dossel, said is, is very much what we need to do. We need to have some conversations with the people that it's affecting, and and it, and it needs to start now, not after it's already decided. Not wait until we are uh, in this kind of a mode again. Provide the time and the people, and the, and the elders will help you. If there's a, a space that can be utilized, they will help set it up. I'm sure there's many in this room that have done so over their lifetime and can contribute to the, to our community in that manner. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Councilor LaBarge, um, I want to thank Anne-Marie Moshio um, for sitting there, and at least she's got a beautiful smile on her face. Um, uh, she's but, referring, this is our Parks and Recreation Director, Anne-Marie Bogino. Um, I, I just want to stress, Councilor, uh, this is not, um, blame me, direct all your, please direct all your anger and blame at me. Do not direct it at either that staff or at the senior services staff, because it's not, it's, I'm, the, I'm the person making the decision, so I, I want people to not, um, again, the senior services department are working through what's been, uh, what's been presented to them, just like the rec, Parks and Rec Commission staff. Um, this is not their decision, this is ultimately my decision, so I take responsibility. I don't want you to, um, you know, if you, I, I just want to stress that, so thank you, Councilor, sorry. Yeah, I would really like to ask if, if people that are coming here have questions, they have an opportunity to ask those questions. Sure. Uh, but anyways, I have to agree with um, Peter Jones about transparency. I found out after the, the board had their meeting and I had gone to the director of the senior center in regards to was this happening. And she did tell me as a counselor that she had a meeting with the mayor they talked about it, and she 
apparently had brought it to the board. But I think immediately right after that board meeting, that there should have been a meeting put in place immediately. And I think hearing from Peter Jones about the transparency, like he said, he had wished he had known this mm -hmm. because it made a difference. So transparency is very, very valuable, and the mayor has heard this. But hearing how the director of the Senior Center and the Recreation Department are going to come together and try to make it work out. But I really think, Mayor, that you need to put in place a Citizens Advisory Committee immediately, immediately, so that their input, input is very valuable here. Thank you, Councilor. And let me just say, I, I, um, I agree with what you and what Peter said. Um, if I could turn back the clock, I, would, I should have had this meeting back in March. I should have. Um, I, so I, I can't change that, but I will say to you that I should have done that. So I appreciate Well, if you're asking me why I didn't, um, I didn't. Uh, and obviously, I was working on other issues, uh, working on our capital plan, our budget, all kinds of other things, and I didn't do it. And so I accept responsibility for that, and, and, and I should have done that. So part of, uh, part of life, part of this job is a learning experience.